Finding the tomb of an important historical figure is one of the juiciest finds modern archaeologists can come across, and the examination of their remains can reveal the answers to age-old secrets. For example, when the body of King Tut underwent genetic testing, he was found to have several deformities, probably as a result of coming from an unfortunately long line of incestuous marriage. It was also found that his likely cause of death stemmed from complications with a serious leg fracture. The point is, archaeologists didn't learn these details from historical texts, and so if we would have never uncovered his body, there's a lot that we would have never known about our boy king from 3,000 years ago. And unfortunately, that's the position we're in with many, many famous historical figures. From Genghis Khan to Cleopatra, here are a few of the most influential individuals in history whose lives and legacies are well known, but whose final resting places have never been found. Arguably one of the most powerful people in all of history, Genghis Khan commanded one of the most powerful armies of all time and created a historically massive empire. At his empire's peak, approximately 25% of the entire world's population was under Mongol rule, a truly unimaginable feat. It's even been hypothesized that he removed up to 700 million tons of carbon from the atmosphere by slaughtering 11% of the world's population at the time. So. Go green, that eco-warrior. But for all he accomplished, there are a lot of things we still don't know about the man. For starters, historians aren't even exactly sure how he died. His date of death is generally put in the year 1227, which we know thanks to a surviving ancient text, but it doesn't describe what killed him. The text, a Chinese manuscript called The History of Wan, basically describes how Genghis was sick with a fever for about a week before dying, which has been attributed to everything from typhoid to poison. Just before we continue with today's video, I want to tell you about today's fantastic sponsor, and that is Foreo. Now, let me break it down for you. Foreo, that's F-O-R-E-O, is a Swedish beauty tech company that's making waves in the skincare world. They've got a fantastic lineup of gadgets, but today, I want to talk to you about the bear. Now, you might be thinking, Simon, you're not a beauty YouTuber. What are you talking about? I clicked on the wrong channel. What's going on here? Well, look, Foreo approached me, and they were like, do you want to do a sponsorship? And I'm like, you know I am, right? I'm not like doing the doing the makeup and the beauty and such things. They're like, just let us send it to you and see if you like it, fact boy. And so I said yes. They sent it to me. They said try it for two weeks. I tried it for a month before I was confident enough in it. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> look, my years of neglected skin actually look better. I was uh, a skeptic and I was converted. This little wonder is like a personal trainer for your face. It uses something called microcurrent technology to tone and firm your skin, which is a thing that happened to me. I had a more defined face, <laughs> which is a phrase that I never thought I would say. And my skin looked less splotchy and weird. I don't know if you see it on the camera, like before and after, but... It just looks nicer. And now here's where it gets fancy. The bear has something called an anti-shock system, which scans your skin's resistance to electricity and adjusts its microcurrent intensity for safety and comfort. No shocks, just smooth sailing to better skin, which honestly, I didn't even know was a problem. But Foreo have thought about it. So here's what you do. Foreo is offering you an exclusive deal. Click the link below to get a whopping 21% off the bear for the first 100 people who click it. Whether it's a gift for you or your significant other, I got my wife one of these after she saw me using it, it's a great thing to buy. Thanks to Foreo for partnering us with this video. And remember, great skin isn't just for the ladies. Treat yourself to the bear by Foreo. And now back to our regular programming. The most likely answer is probably the bubonic plague. But finding and examining his body might give us the evidence that we need so we can know for sure. But those remains have been lost for a long, long time, their location reportedly turning into a secret immediately following his burial. According to one legend, originating from explorer Marco Polo, in order to keep the location unknown, the 2,000 slaves that attended Genghis's funeral were killed by a group of soldiers who were then, in turn, killed by a separate group of soldiers who then marched a long distance and killed themselves, taking their secrets to their own graves. Other folklore states that the grave was hidden by stampeding it with horses and then planting a forest on top of it, and another tells of how a river was diverted onto it to make finding the grave just outright impossible. Which of these is true, if any, isn't known, and neither is the region in which any of these tales supposedly take place. However, modern archaeologists believe that the burial site of Genghis is probably near the mountain of Bakan Kuldan, a sacred Mongol site where Genghis prayed before beginning his conquests. In 2001, a joint American-Mongolian expedition found a peculiar new site, a walled burial grounds near the city of Batshari, 
seat in eastern Mongolia. The find was close to the mounds in Bakan Khaldun, as well as the reported location of the Kural Tai, or ritual, during which Genghis proclaimed himself the ruler of unified Mongolia in the year 1206. The site contained an estimated 60 unopened tombs, with at least 20 presumably for individuals of great importance or high status. Pottery shards in the area even predate the life of Genghis, meaning it has the potential to be a grave site of several important historical figures. However, permission for excavating the site, as well as many others, has proven tricky, as many of the sites are still considered holy and a place of pilgrimage for the locals. And so, despite all the effort, we really are much closer to finding Genghis Khan now than we were a hundred years ago. And unless a major discovery happens in the coming years, the resting place of the Mongol conqueror is likely to remain unknown. When most people are in their 20s, they're usually busy with higher education, beginning careers, or starting families. But by this time in his life, Alexander the Great was already conducting one of the most successful military campaigns in history, even crushing the mighty Persia in his path. In about 10 years, his unstoppable conquest resulted in one of the largest empires in history, stretching from his homeland in southern Europe all the way to India. But while it was one of the largest, his empire was also one of the shortest lived, splintering after his sudden death in Babylon in 321 BC when conflict erupted over who would be his successor. But as with many figures who lived so long ago, the cause of his death isn't exactly clear. Much like with Genghis Khan, we know that Alexander succumbed to a fever, but the proposed causes of this fever range from from malaria to arsenic poisoning from one of his generals. On his deathbed, Alexander requested that his body be laid to rest in the temple of Zeus Ammon at the oasis of Sirwar, a site in Egypt of great importance to the man who had proclaimed to be the son of said god. However, as a result of the conflict following his death, this request was never honored. His generals Seleucius, Ptolemy, and Peridicus fought over what to do with his corpse, which had been placed in a special fitted coffin made of solid gold. It was eventually decided to march him back to Macedonia, but while passing through Syria on his way home, Ptolemy took over the procession and diverted it to Egypt. Alexander was then interred in Memphis, but after a couple of decades, it was reported to have been moved to Alexandria. Over the next few centuries, his tomb was raided by more than a few individuals who wanted some of the goodies buried with him. And no, these weren't just petty grave robbers. Cleopatra reportedly stole gold from his tomb, and Caligula took Alexander's breastplate. Around the year 200 AD, the tomb was sealed up, and over the years, it was slowly forgotten. Sometime in the 14th hundreds, geographer Leo the African claimed that amidst the ruins of Alexandria was a small structure which the locals ascertained contained the body of Alexander the Great. This vague mention is one of the last descriptions of Alexander's tomb, and in the present day, no one knows where it is located. Now, Obviously, this would be the discovery of a lifetime, and so the Egyptian Supreme Council for Antiquities has launched nearly 150 official searches for the ancient king, but they've all come up empty-handed. In the 1850s, one scholar reported that the tomb had been discovered inside the Nabi Daniel Mosque in Alexandria, but they failed to come forward with any artifacts. The site was of later interest to a man named Heinrich Schleiman, who you may know as the man who blew up the city of Troy, but he was denied permission to explore it, and thankfully slow, or he might have used dynamite to excavate another historical site. Now, while most believe the tomb to be somewhere in the ruins of Alexandria, there are others who disagree. In 1993, it was proposed that in the royal tomb of uh, Vagina in Greece, the body buried there is not Philip II, but actually his son Alexander. Another archaeologist claimed to have identified his tomb in Sia in Egypt, where he originally wanted to be buried, but this claim is highly disputed. The most recent promising find aired on an episode of National Geographic, where a theory was put forward that Alexander's body had long ago been stolen from Alexandria by Venetian merchants who mistook his body for that of St. Mark. After the body was taken to Venice, it was hailed as the biblical author and placed in St. Mark's basilica, a theory somewhat supported by Macedonian pottery shards found in the foundations of the basilica. But these are ultra speculation, and to this day, his remains, or even the legendary gold coffin, have yet to be located, and it seems that the search for Alexander will continue for many years to come. Of all the influential figures to come from ancient Rome, Caligula is perhaps one of the most controversial. During his time as the third Roman emperor, ruling for four years beginning in the year 37 AD, he was described by some sources as an emperor loved by, quote, all the world from the rising to the setting sun, and the first several months of his reign were peaceful. However, sources later began to describe him as cruel, sadistic, perverted, as his true behavior became clear to those close to him. He's accused of killing for entertainment, having a short and dangerous 
temper and wasting obscene amounts of government money. These spending habits led to his rule being plagued by financial crises and disputes with the Roman Senate. He also allegedly began to view himself not as a leader of Rome, but a man of divine origin, appearing in public dressed as various gods such as Apollo. He even allegedly wanted a statue of himself constructed in the Temple of Jerusalem so that he could be worshipped there. Now, there are a lot of stories written about him, and it's unclear which of them have been fabricated. But the sheer volume of tales of incestuous affairs, insanity, and murder really does speak for itself. But in contrast to the previous historical figures that we've covered, we do know for sure what killed Caligula. In the year 41, the Senate was growing increasingly concerned with Caligula's behavior, especially when he announced that he wanted to permanently move to Egypt to be worshipped in Alexandria. A group of men decided to take matters into their own hands, and the emperor was assassinated, being stabbed to death in a scene reminiscent of the more famous one with Julius Caesar. According to historian Suetonius, Caligula's body was then cremated, as many early emperors were, before eventually being placed in the mausoleum of Augustus, which, if true, would mean that his ashes were scattered when the mausoleum was raided during the sack of Rome a few hundred years later. However, this is the only source of information for his burial, and there is a belief among many that his real tomb lies elsewhere, since there's a chance that he wouldn't have been granted the honor of resting with other great figures. This theory made the rounds again in 2011, when an Italian man was arrested while attempting to smuggle a marble statue of Caligula out of the country. The ancient statue was incredibly valuable made of marble and valued at over a million dollars, and when asked by the police, the man said that he had taken it from a tomb near Lake Nemi, a place with a villa where Caligula was known to vacation. Excavations began and it was touted in headlines around the world that his tomb had been located, but they would jump in the gun just a bit. According to Mary Beard, professor at Cambridge University and one of the world's foremost experts on ancient Rome, the chances that this location was the true tomb of Caligula were slim. According to her, it's almost inconceivable that this assassinated symbol of imperial monstrosity would have been given a grand monument, plus a big statue there. She goes on to say that it is more likely that he was given a modest burial in an undisclosed place, perhaps near the Lamian Gardens or in some other currently unknown location. And so, despite the headlines that you might have seen, or we most likely have not found the tomb of Caligula, and if his ashes were indeed slipped into the mausoleum at some point after the chaos of the sack of Rome, they are almost certainly lost to the ages. Attila the Hunt was a man so vicious that even to this day his name is synonymous with brutality. Called the Scourge of God by the Romans, his life was defined by the devastating military campaigns he commanded, especially the plundering of Roman territories. His reign of terror was so influential that it is often credited as a factor in destabilizing the Western Roman Empire, which later collapsed. He was known for extorting protection money from the Romans in exchange for peace treaties, which would routinely be broken. Attila was never able to conquer Rome, however, and although he planned to return later for another attempt at the historic city, his empire-building ambitions abruptly came to a halt with his sudden death in 453 AD. Death will tend to do that. The circumstances of his death are pretty muddy at best. It's known that he died during a feast on his wedding night, and reportedly due to excessive bleeding. The bleeding may have been a hemorrhage in the lower part of his esophagus, a condition which can arise due to many years of highly excessive alcohol consumption, though others posit that he was intentionally murdered by his newlywed wife, perhaps with poison. For a man with such great riches, you would expect his funeral and burial to be a huge deal. But because it was so long ago, there's only one surviving written source about it, and it comes from several decades after the fact. Sixth-century historian Jordanes wrote in his work Gattaca that Attila was buried in our unique coffin made from three layers of three separate metals. The outermost layer was made of iron, chosen to represent the military prowess of the Huns, while the next two layers were made of silver and then gold to represent his vast wealth. Similar to the tale of Genghis Khan, it was written that the servant who built the tomb and buried the coffin were murdered to keep its location a secret and to prevent grave robbers from getting their sticky fingers on all sorts of shiny things that were buried with him, such as gold, gems, and weaponry. Suffice to say, finding this tomb would be an astonishing discovery, and the search for these riches has been going on since at least the 13th century, but nobody has had any luck thus far, at least as far as we know. Modern scholars believe that the grave is located somewhere in the Great Hungarian Plain, but this is a massive piece of land, and there aren't any more clues to narrow it down further than that. But despite the odds, many are optimistic that the tomb can still be found. Ralph Matheson, professor of classics and medieval studies, stated that in his opinion, quote, no doubt the tomb will be found someday. It may well be found to have been robbed in antiquity. 
This is a big possibility, as it very easily could have been pillaged with no record. But it is also possible that it was found in more recent times just without us knowing what it was. Many historical sites have been unearthed in Hungary, dating back to the time of Attila, and one of these contained hordes of gold objects, though no human remains. So there is a good chance that Attila's tomb and the riches it holds are still out there, just waiting to be unearthed. And finally, we have Cleopatra VII, one of history's most influential and well-known figures. Queen of the Ptolemaic Kingdom of Egypt, she was known for her intellect, beauty, and charisma, making her the subject of fascination over the millennia. Initially the lover of none other than Julius Caesar, she was actually present in Rome when he was murdered in 44 BC. In the aftermath of his assassination, her attention turned to Mark Antony, who was in struggle for power in the collapsing Roman Republic. They were together for 11 years before everything came to an end when the armies of Octavian, later called Augustus, defeated their combined forces in the Battle of Actium. After receiving false news that Cleopatra had died, Antony took his own life, leading Cleopatra to take hers in turn. It's a tragic tale that's been told through the ages, but despite being one of the most famous queens in all of history, her body's never been located. According to more than one historian, Cleopatra and Mark Antony were buried together in a single crypt after Octavian granted his permission for such an arrangement, and modern archaeologists believe that this famous couple is likely located somewhere in ancient Alexandria. Unfortunately, this might mean that it is underwater, as much of the region has since been swallowed up by the Mediterranean Sea. Searches for the tomb are constantly underway, with other unrelated burial sites often being discovered in the process. Dominican archaeologist Kathleen Martinez has excavated nearly 30 tombs around Alexandria, and although none of them contained the elusive lovers, ten other mummies were found, as well as coins depicting Cleopatra and Antony embracing each other. But there is some fairly recent news on this one. Martinez announced in November 2022 that a team had uncovered a massive tunnel underneath the Temple of Osiris in the ancient ruined city of De Poseiris Magna. She was drawn to this temple thanks to the belief that during her life, Cleopatra was believed to be the human incarnation of the goddess Isis, while Mark Antony was the incarnation of the god Osiris. And sure enough, they struck gold at the Temple of Osiris. What they found deep underground was a massive tunnel stretching more than 1,300 meters or nearly 4,300 feet and packed with artifacts depicting not only Cleopatra but also Alexander the Great. There is also a surprising amount of imagery of the goddess Isis. The tunnel itself is extraordinary, with some archaeologists calling it a geometric miracle. Excavations will continue in the area for years to come, and Martinez herself believes that we are closer than ever to finally finding the truth, a find which she claims would be the archaeological discovery of the century.